Hi, what's up guys? Welcome to another very interesting and exciting Projection 3D tutorial. And this one will create a projection of this simple interior. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag this image here and create a comp. Then press match camera and start matching it. Now, there's no need to change focal length. You can simply adjust it using camera tool. Remember to watch the grid lines. They should match the lines on the image. Okay, now I'll unhide helper grid and uncheck scaling on all axes. Reduce the grid along X to check the lines. Enable this. Now look, everything is aligned with the image lines. I also reduced the grid along Y to create a ceiling. Now that we made sure that the lines match, let's give our grid dimension of the room. Now of course you can quickly and easily match camera in FSPY, but let's not forget that there's also a standard way. Okay, now look. This is the line of the far corner of the wall and ceiling hidden behind the wall. We can see where the floor ends, but we don't see where the ceiling ends because it's hidden behind the wall. Look, now following this line, we can find where the hidden corner is. So the far right corner of the room is here. And here's the left corner. So we match the grid and now it repeats the position of the floor, ceiling, left and the back wall of the room. And that's enough for now. Let's not get into the right wall right now. Unhide the grid, select both image and camera and create projection. We need five copies. Okay, now we can start modeling. Double click projection scene five, and let's create the walls using helper grid. Check out the back, left, bottom, and the top side. You can see that the right wall is protruding, so we'll get to that later. So click OK, and let's see. Floor, ceiling, far wall, and the left wall. Great. All right, so now go to render option to increase shadow map resolution to maximum value. This will bring back the sharpness. Okay, let's generate position and create this thick wall or column in the front. So do that and then create a plane on that position. Cool, rotated 90 degrees. And so now you can see that it has the same orientation as the wall. Now let's just quickly draw a mask along the outlines of the wall. Okay, good. Now for the side part. Open Surface Modeler. Select this vertex, get it, also this one. Uncheck along the polygon and then press create polygon. Done. Let's move our camera and check. As you can see, the room already started to take shape. All right, cool. Now let's continue. Let's go ahead and generate position for the right wall. Create a plane. Leave orientation as it is. And now let's mask the front side. This is where we should create a vertex so that it matches the ceiling line. Okay, great. Now duplicate it with Ctrl D and move back the second one. Okay. 
Okay, now adjust vertices. Also this one. Good. Now we can create the side part using Mask Modeler. Select both. Open Mask Modeler and press Create Surface. Let's see. Perfect. Delete this one. We don't need it anymore. Leave the front part. Okay, let's move our camera and check it again. Yeah, very well. So we're done with both the column and the right wall. Now let's create this wall with curtains. In order to be able to do that, we first need to generate position for it. So we should find the point where the wall touches the floor because we can't see it in the image. I think it's around here somewhere. The wall does not start directly behind the table because on the left side you can see that part of the sofa is farther than the table. Okay, so let's select our floor and generate position of the wall. So I suggest you kind of draw an imaginary line to make sure the place is correct. Okay, let's create a plane. Let's make sure it has the correct orientation. And let's draw a mask. Now it looks like the ceiling is lower behind the wall and the corner of the wall and ceiling is right here. And here's the passage. So we go down the contour of the curtain. Okay, done. Let's move the camera and see what we got. Great, everything looks correct. Our wall is ready. So let's move on. Let's make the sofa. All right, so you can see that this is the point where the sofa touches the floor. And that's what we need actually. Select bottom layer and generate position. And don't forget to always select the floor, which is the bottom layer here. This is where the object stands to generate position. So we should change orientation now. Press R, change X rotation to 90. Great. Now select Pen Tool and draw a mask along the horizontal surface of the sofa. It's not that difficult, just draw parallel lines with the lines of the upper surface of the sofa. Like so. Mask repeats the lines of the bottom surface of the sofa. Now just duplicate this layer, enable it, and move up along Z. Cool. Adjust the mask. Simply repeat the contours of the sofa. Great. Now we can use Mask Modeler. Select both layers. Create surface. Awesome. We can delete the bottom part now. It already did its job. Okay, let's see. Great. Now let's create this one. 
So select bottom layer, which is our floor, and generate position here. Let's use a simple cube primitive. Open anchor point editor, check reposition only anchor point, and then move anchor point to the bottom right corner. Okay, so open the scale parameter of the cube and adjust it. Uncheck this and adjust the scale for each axis separately. I think we should change orientation a little bit. Click R and set Y rotation to 1. Great. Keep on adjusting the scale. Good. And also along the X. You know what? Actually, we can do it much quicker with Mask Modeler. All right, that's taken care of. What's next? Looks like it's that coffee table. Let's select the floor and generate position for it. Create a plane. Make it horizontal. and draw a mask along the bottom outlines of the coffee table. Good. Now duplicate and move the new one up. Adjust vertices a little. All right, select both layers and create the surface with Mask Modeler. Delete the bottom part. Great. Now for the laptop. Generate position on the top of the coffee table. Create a plane. Make it horizontal. And let's give it a proper orientation. And we'll do that using rotation tool. Like this. So that the top part of the laptop and the arrow has the same orientation. And that's all. Now let's just mask it. Now let's do the back of the sofa. Let's do that quickly. Select this part, just a little bit. Open Surface Modeler. Select this vertex, get it. Then this one, create polygon, rotate it. and simply adjust the vertices. Okay, that's done. Create polygon again. Rotate it. Adjust. Awesome. Now we're finished modeling. Let's move our camera and check. Yes, that's it. Now we should replace projection image and projection scenes and move objects each into their own composition. All right, so the first one, it's the main image. Nothing was erased in Photoshop. It's not changeable. 
In this scene, there will only be foreground objects. Okay, let's move on and in projection scene 2, replace projection image to image called Minimalist Living Room 2. Then in projection scene 3, choose Minimalist Living Room 3 and so on. For projection scene 5, choose Minimalist Living Room BG. I erased or restore some things in advance in each of these images. I'll attach all the assets for this tutorial. If someone does not know how projection works and why projection images are processed in Photoshop, then go ahead and watch Projection 3D for Beginners tutorial. Now look, for example, in this copy, I restore the left wall and a window and also part of the sofa. And now, moving in front, behind the front objects, we will see these restored places. But let's be consistent. Let's head over to projection scene 5 and have a look. The walls of the room should remain in the scene because there is actually nothing behind those walls. These two are the parts of the front column, so just move them to projection scene 1. And let's have a look. Also, don't forget to increase shadow map resolution in all scenes for better quality. Go to Render Options and do that. Let's have a look. As you can see, the last one projects the image with the restored parts onto the wall, and the first one projects the main image onto the front column. So together they show the complete picture. Okay, let's move on. And so, select the parts of the right protruding wall and move them over to projection scene 2. Good, let's move on. The front part of the sofa also goes to projection scene 2. And now let's animate the camera to see what kind of result we get. Add keys on position and point of interest. Go to the fourth second and create some movement using camera tool. Now look, see? No artifacts. Column, right wall, great. Now the rest of the sofa. Actually, also the table. Select all these parts and move them to projection scene 3. Let's see. Everything seems clear, nothing peeking from behind. Let's move on. Top of the laptop and sofa's backside parts go to projection scene 3. And also, I'll move the middle wall to projection scene 4. Good. Let's have a look. Nothing speaking from behind. Everything looks clear and beautiful. Maybe just a quick fix here. I think I see white edges of the column. So I'll go to projection scene 1 to adjust the mask a little bit. Just a bit. Also this one. Good, we're done here. Let's reduce composition to 4 seconds. 
right click, trim com to work area. Let's pre render and see. Now here you can see that the laptop is also projected on the surface of the sofa. We should fix that. See? So why does that happen? This is the part of the sofa and this is the laptop. And since one overlaps the other, they can be in the same projection copy. So select the sofa model and move it to projection scene 4. And that solved the problem for us. Let's pre-render again. Awesome. Our scene is complete. Also, you can add fire here if you want to. I created something that looks like fire using various effects. I will render it and attach it to the tutorial. Let's check it out. All right, good. So now in our scene and projection 3D menu, go to File, Import Image, Footage, and choose the fire footage. Double click it and move anchor point over here. Great. Now go to projection scene two. Select this part of the wall and generate position over here. Maximize the plugin, go to Generate Menu, select Position from Point. And now you can see that the null object is added to that position. So press Ctrl X to cut and move it to the main comp. Press P and copy position parameters and then paste it on that fire thing. Select fire, press R to open orientation and rotate it 90 degrees along the Y. Also change mode from normal to screen. Or maybe add. Okay, squeeze it. And move it back. Also stretch it. And it's done. Let's go ahead and pre-render. Yeah, not bad at all. But let's also sharpen the scene. Create adjustment layer and add sharpen effect to it. Let's say 10. Pre-render again. and enjoy the result.
All right, guys, that's all for now. I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.